my name is Mark Senek, and I'm the author of the weblog IonFDA. I'm going to be introducing a series of tutorials that are aimed at giving information to people that might not be that apparent or about which they might have questions or sometimes that I see people asking about in their Google searches when they come to IonFDA. So today I'm going to discuss the issue of complete response letters. Complete response letters are something that the uh, FDA began issuing through the Center for Drug Evaluation and Research last August 11th. Prior to that, uh, the Center for Biologics Evaluation and Research, CBER, had been issuing complete response letters for over a decade. But the Center for Drug Evaluation and Research, CEDAR, uh, used to issue what were called approval, approval letters, which were the good news and allowed you to go ahead and market a product, uh, approvable letters, which would state that for any one of a number of reasons your, your uh, new drug application had not been approved, um, but that it could be approved if you satisfied a few conditions, or a non-approval letter, uh, meaning that your application simply wasn't going to make it. Uh, if an approvable letter was issued, uh, the reasons could really vary. Uh, and to address those issues, it could take a company a matter of days in some cases, or a matter of many months. For example, they could be asking for uh, a label change. They could ask, be asking that some data be recut, or they could be asking for something as serious as a new clinical trial on either safety or efficacy. A new clinical trial means that there's going to be a lot of time between uh, the, the period of time that the company receives a letter and uh, the time that they resubmit their application for uh, approval. Under the old paradigm of, uh, of approval, approvable, or not approval, um, when an approvable letter would be issued, it would be up to the company to determine what it would say about the contents of that approvable letter, and even the fact that the approvable letter existed. The FDA would not, in fact, say anything at all about an approvable letter situation. Now today, the paradigm has shifted, and CEDAR is only issuing two kinds of letters. The first kind of letter is an approval letter, again, the good news that you can go ahead and mark it, or a complete response letter. That's it. <laughs> and the complete response letter uh, like the approvable letter, is proprietary. Its contents are not known to anyone but the company, and it's up to the company to determine what, if anything, they're going to say about the contents. The reason that's important uh, is actually, uh, it's important on a multiple uh, number of uh, levels. Uh, for investors, for example, uh, under the old paradigm, uh, an investor could hear that uh, uh, an application had gotten a, a non-approvable uh, letter, meaning that was pretty much the end of the line for the product, though not necessarily. Um, but uh, at least it, it spelled some definition to the situation. Under the new paradigm, an investor has no way of knowing what's in that letter and how many conditions have been laid out in the what is being more frequently called the pathway to approval for the company uh, as laid out in the complete response letter. So uh, there's much more of a guessing game and almost a developing art in terms of reading the tea leaves of what companies say about a complete response letter. For example, in formulating a press release about a complete response letter, a company may go and uh, be very upfront and say that they do have to do a new clinical trial, which will indicate many months, uh, or spell out exactly what the deficits in the new drug application were. But some companies will be very tight-lipped and merely state that they've received a complete response letter and will be working with the FDA to clarify things. Some have made the speculation that if a letter, uh, if a company states that they have gotten the brand name, for example, um, or that the um, uh, that the FDA has accomplished its inspection of uh, the manufacturing facilities, that that indicates that the complete response letter actually has uh, just minor uh, uh, issues uh, to resolve because why would the FDA go through the trouble of approving the brand name or going to inspect the plant if in fact they had no intention of approving the drug at some future point. Others have said that's not the case. 
Um, so uh, what has what has transpired really with the uh, advent of a complete response letter situation is that uh, there's less clarity rather than more and frankly less transparency rather than before about what the future of a product is given uh, uh, the response of, uh, uh, from the FDA of a complete response letter. Now the other thing that bears mentioning is that the complete response letter um, uh, situation uh, appears uh, during 2008 to have really um, blossomed. Uh, the CEDAR started uh, uh, issuing these letters in August of 2008 and has since issued a number of them. Uh, a lot of the issues seem to ha uh, have to be uh, have been centered on pain medications, on medications that have to have a uh, what was formerly a risk map now uh, 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 converted to a risk evaluation management strategy, um, and. Uh, in addition to that, the FDA is having a very difficult time meeting PDUFA deadlines. That means uh, uh, that what we've seen is uh, an increase in the number of complete response letters and really uh, what appears to be a bit of a slowdown in approvals. Uh, that is likely to go on during 2009. But the main points I want you to walk away with are that the, the uh, new policy has shifted there are only two kinds of letters that are coming out of FDA CEDAR with respect to drugs, and those will be either an approval or a complete response letter. The complete response letter is going to uh, state a pathway uh, for a product to approval so that the application can be approved by the FDA, but the contents of that letter are going to be unknown to anybody but the company, and it's up to the company to decide when and how it releases that information. The style of a press release may give you indications as to what's going on with uh, uh, the application, and you may be able to discern, given the company's willingness to uh, let the information appear in a press release, uh, and, and gauge what levels of time before the NDA actually gets approval. The last thing I want uh, to say about the situation is that there are class one and class two resubmissions that are asked for in these letters. A class one pretty much has to do with all of the minor things that we've talked about. Label changes, uh, uh, perhaps an adjustment to um, uh, the risk management program, minor changes that, that won't take very long. Um, but uh, a class two means that there's probably going to have to be something like a new and major study. Again, we won't know what's in that letter, so we don't know if it's a class one or class two. And we'll simply have to rely on reading the tea leaves of each and every press release. And the communicators who are responsible for developing these press releases are going to have to be very careful in their uh, choice of words because uh, the wrong choice can certainly lend the wrong impression. Thanks for joining me, and I look forward to doing more of these tutorials in the future, and have a good day.